Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Nick. I'm joined in the shop by my friend April Wilkerson and Jay Bates. For the last day that they're in the shop with me, we figured we would all make clocks to see how different they turned out. Stay tuned and I'll show you the one that I made. April and I started out by planing down some rough sawn eight quarter curly maple. This piece was too big for the clock that I was making, so I cut it to rough size on my table saw sled. Then I could slide in my table saw fence, and then I chose what side was flattest, and then put that up against the fence. Cleaned up one edge, and then flipped it around and cleaned up the other side. I brought this back to my table saw sled and made sure that both ends were nice and square. I then marked out on each end 45 degree cuts that I was gonna make into this piece. That top face was gonna be my show face. So if I cut out these 45 degree chunks, I was gonna have grain continuity wrap all the way around on each of the three sides for my clock. Then I set my table saw blade to 45 degrees and I could begin on my cuts. I was pretty careful to make sure how I set this up to where I didn't eliminate a whole lot of grain on that wrap. It was definitely interesting to get to see Jay and April taping their videos alongside mine. I could then readjust the table saw fence and make the other cut on that face piece. Then on the two side pieces, I cut off the waist as well. I was going to use masking tape not only as just clamps, but also to make sure that the grain continuity, that everything lined up just perfect. Here you can see all three of us working. It was definitely a treat having them in the shop, not only because we're friends and it was, it was just fun to hang out, but woodworking is a real solitary activity. And anytime you can involve other people, whether you're filming a YouTube video or not, it's just nice to be able to take that activity to where it's normally, you're just by yourself and involve other people to see the different ways in which they make things and the different procedures that they go through to achieve similar results. Once I had my masking tape installed, I added glue to the bevels and spread that out with an acid brush. Once everything was thoroughly coated, I could then just flip up my pieces and tape those in place, making sure I had a nice tight glue joint. Masking tape doesn't stretch a whole lot, but you can get it rather taut. Once the glue had dried for about 45 minutes, I had removed the tape and tried to clean out a little bit of that squeeze out. I probably let this go a little bit longer being I had other people in the shop and we were having so much fun. So I'd probably then the next one go maybe 25 to 30 minutes and then the glue cleanup could be a whole lot easier. But once I removed those tape hinges, the grain was nice and tight. There was no gap and everything lined up. It looked really nice. So then I brought it back to my table saw sled and with a stop block in place, I could then trim everything nice and straight and square and even on the ends. I then marked out for not only the center section for the clock mechanism to go, but also the three, six, nine, and 12 positions of the clock. I then took my clock blank to the drill press and drilled out for that center hole. That was gonna be a little bit larger than the other holes. Then with that three, six, 12, and nine, I drilled non-through holes so that I could later come back and I had a brass rod in a drill that I could just taper the edge to make it easier to install. And while April was spinning the drill with the brass rod in it, I could then use a tubing cutter to cut them to approximate length, leaving, I would say, an extra eighth to a quarter of an inch. Then using some CA glue in the hole, I hammered those brass pegs in the holes. I wasn't sure at this point whether I was actually gonna leave these long or sand them flush. I opted to sand them flush. Here you can see Jay and April again working on their clocks. Once I had not only the brass peg sanded flush, but also I brought everything to 220 grit to make sure everything was nice and smooth, I could then wipe on a water-based dye. Adding this dye to the curly maple accentuates all those curls and really gives it a nice look. Once the dye was no longer wet, I coated it with a couple coats of satin spray-on lacquer.
Moving back to my table saw and using my crosscut sled again, I cut two pieces of pine to length and squared up the ends. And then I could flip my blade back to 45 degrees and add a chamfer on the front edge as well as both ends of these pieces. These were going to act as my top and bottom. I did both the ends using a sacrificial fence on my miter gauge. Then I slid my table saw fence over to add the chamfer on the front edge. I snuck up on this. I started with my fence a little bit further away than it needed to be and then just nudged it over ever so slightly so that my chamfers ended up matching on the corners. A little bit of trial and error but it works out really well. And I knew I was going to be painting these top and bottom pieces so just with a little drywall joint compound I smudged that into the end grain to make the painting a little bit easier. Once that was dry I sanded it smooth and added some painter's tape so that I had some bare wood when I went to glue this on later and then just some aerosol black spray paint. After the paint had dried those top and bottom pieces got a couple coats of satin lacquer as well. Then I just cut four small pieces off of a dowel rod, marked the location to where I was going to drill each of these because that's how I was going to attach the top and bottom with just a little bit of glue and some dowels. Once I had all that laid out I could drill both the clock section and then the top and bottom pieces. After that was done, I just did a test fit and everything lined up really nice. Then I just added some glue to the dowels and the holes and also the surfaces and then just set it into a clamp and let it dry. I had to use a long stem clock mechanism. If you guys have any questions about any of the stuff that I've used, make sure to check out my build article at nickferry.com and I'll have all the links to everything that I used. When you're tightening up this nut on the clock movement itself, make sure not to over tighten it because you can pull that mechanism apart and just wreck the whole thing. Then I opted to paint the brass colored hour hand, second hand, and minute hand black just because I like that look a little bit better. After those were all installed, I was pretty much done. Well there you go, this is my version of the clock. We all kind of had a challenge the last day they were visiting me in the shop and we all figured Hey, let's make a clock and kind of just work alongside one another and see what we could come up with. If you're not familiar with either Jay or April's channel, check the links in the description below. They made clocks as well, and I, I was really surprised at how really different they turned out, even though we were in the same proximity the whole time. Well, until I see you guys next time, you guys, take care. Does Amber need to suck it in, or...? Project, they came up with rather unique clocks. Clocks! This is typical. <laughs> My face all right or is it all red right now? It's sweaty, I wouldn't do that. Well, this is what I came up with. I'm actually pretty pre- pretty pre- <laughs> I'm just trying to Jay and April are visiting me in my shop. If you guys are not familiar with either, I just did that twice. I'm like, da 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 I was holding da, on da, da, da. Do the hand job? Whoa! <laughs> Hello there! Go! Her clock's better than mine all of a sudden. Raise it up. You raise me up. Well, there you go. This is my version of the clock, all said and done. If you guys have never been um, out of the house, you should leave soon. <laughs> Does it look good here, or you want to? Um, uh, yeah, no, you need to go April's way, all of you. There you go. Silly goose. Silly goose. Gilly Seuss. Gilly Seuss. I don't know where mine is. Aww. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit scared right now. Oh no. Uh, oh no. Those aren't mine. Those are Jay's. What are you gonna do? Mine have a red thing. What are you gonna do? I don't know. What are you gonna do? I just said I don't know. Where are they? I don't know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Missing. This is kind of awesome because when Nick was at my place, I had to deal with it all myself. This is hearing protection. Like, now you just have to deal with both of us. No, it's not necessarily dealing with anybody. It's yeah, he can be quiet while. Oh, uh, you can be quiet while I, I do, and you're amusing him. I'm so. entertaining it. You know, hey, where? inside. I bet you anything they're inside. Are they inside? No, they're not inside. To see how different they turned out. Stick around, I'll show you which one I made. I like that. That was great. I'm not touching it. We got a screen. It's good now.